Hey Taurus, welcome to your tarot session. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've been gone for only, you know, 11 days and I feel like I've been gone forever. I'm so happy to be back. And I'm going to be honoring, um, you know, my current rhythm. I'm going through a lot of healing physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, in all the ways. And I know I'm not alone. I know a lot of you guys have been going through very similar things and navigating similar themes right now. You know, where we are in eclipse season. It's big. It's, I believe, worth it. But healing is not cute. Healing can be very ugly and very messy. Um, so it really is an honor that you guys are choosing to listen to this video and navigating very uncertain times uh, with me, you know, by my side. So thank you so much for everything. Um, and <laughs> let's see, right away, the judgment card and the two of swords are coming out as general energy of this reading, which is so interesting because the Two of Swords really feels like rooting ourselves um, as profoundly as we can in the present moment because with the Judgment card, something is being excavated, something has come up to the surface. It could be a very intense realization but also just the current energies, you know, judgment card to me is so connected to eclipse. It's the perfect representation of what an eclipse is. It's clearing away so much. But in order to do that, again, I think that the two of swords is also kind of a perfect representation of what we quote unquote have to do. Rooting ourselves. There could be a lot of new ideas or a lot of invitations to try something new, to do things differently. Um, I'm hearing the pathless path, um, not knowing exactly where you belong in this moment, what you should be doing next. What is the next big thing for you? What is the, what is the next change? And the only thing you are invited to do is to root, anchor, and of course be present always. But with the Two of Swords, it really is about accepting that you don't know and sitting with the feelings, which is not easy. It's not easy. And I've been trying to do that um, in the past 11 days to sit with the feelings and to not judge what is coming up and to name it and sit with it. And I feel like as a Taurus myself, you know, I'm very practical. I'm like, okay, so what am I doing with that feeling? What am I doing with this energy that's being excavated? And now so many things are being revealed and so many things are changing within me and around me. And what am I doing with this? I feel like with Taurus, again, it's like we're looking for what practical thing. And also we are still in Virgo season. Our brains, our nervous system are needing clear steps, a clear, you know, clear information around what should we be doing. There's no um, clear answer. And I don't think we need more information. We have enough information. How are we sitting with what we have? How are we digesting what we know and working through that? Um, very, very big energies here. Big energies. So I cannot overlook this and, and rush um, words and sentences. I think that it's intense and there's no perfect words for what's happening right now collectively and individually. Okay, Taurus, what is this all about? I want more details. 
I want to investigate this. That seemed like a very important message. We don't need more information. We need to look within. And the tarot is the best tool to do that. So first card out, I'm not surprised. Definitely not surprised that the Knight of Cups is here. And I know you've heard me say that before. This card is about showing yourselves more compassion. Whatever is coming up, Taurus, the feelings, the thought, it could be also like how you judge yourself. Judgment card is a lot about how we judge ourselves, judge other people, especially judge where we are on our paths. I noticed that this card, you know, comes up a lot when I'm telling myself, oh, I should be so much further. If I have done things differently, I would be someplace, you know, so much further, so much different. Can we show ourselves more compassion? Can we be present with the feelings, you know, the cups we are holding so much? So you are doing enough. You are doing more than enough. And even if your brain, your nervous system is telling you, well, you should be doing more. That's not good enough. That is an old story. And again, with the eclipse, I feel like so much is being washed over. So much is being cleared out. And a lot of it are old stories and trying to plan everything and trying to predict everything. This eclipse is in Pisces and Pisces is inviting us to trust uncertainty, to move with the flows of life. So very interesting how we are kind of working hand in hand with the water energy of the zodiac, with this need to flow, to give ourselves a little bit of a break when it comes to predicting and planning everything and following a certain plan. Um, in what areas of your life can you give yourself a little bit of a break? And the Knight of Swords is here. So do you see, like, there is kind of a, an inner conflict going on here. There's so much I have to do. I know what I am capable of. I know that if I just do what I'm supposed to do, I can get everything that I need. I'm going to be aligned and I'm going to be satisfied but i think that's an illusion here i really feel this is an illusion and also i feel like seeing those two cards here again kind of confirm you are doing enough and even if you're not seeing it or trusting it in this moment changes are happening mentally emotionally spiritually the universe is moving you into a new space slowly but surely but sometimes when we are focused on doing the inner work the invisible work as a Taurus it, it's it's weird because we love to see we need to see the reality you know we are the first earth sign of the zodiac we ground ideas our, our mantra is, I have. So when we see what we have, when we are kind of connecting with the material, it gives us this confirmation. But it's an illusion. It's an illusion. It's not real. It's not because you have more than you are better, that you are doing better. I don't think this is it. And with the Pisces eclipse, less is more, my friend. And I think we're going to start really understanding that. Oh, yes. And the Ace of Pentacles is here. So this is it. This eclipse is moving us into some type of a new reality where less is more. It's very interesting that I said that and the Ace of Pentacles came through. I love how the tarot sometimes is so literal in that way. I feel like the tarot sometimes invites us to 
go back to what is simple, go back to the basics of everything. So Ace of Pentacles here feels like an invitation to try something new. Um, subscribe to that class, that online class, if it's possible for you. Is there something that you want to learn? Is there a book that you've been wanting to read, but you constantly forget about it or your brain is just, you know, thinking of so many things at the same time. It's very hard to ground an idea. And again, this is the Taurus strength. So I feel like in the next week or so, it's going to be an amazing time to start something. Again, I think it's something that you've already thought about in the past, something that you felt interested in in the past. Ace of Pentacle, and every time you see a hand like that in the tarot, it's about an exchange of energy. It's not just the universe offering you something. It's an exchange. So try something different. Say yes to yourself in that way. And step in the situation, I would say, with no preconceived idea of what it's going to be. And especially not stepping in it with a need for perfection can you let go of this obsession of perfectionism like wanting to be the best at something wanting to absolutely make something out of everything that you're learning again you know so much you don't need more information you need to do something uh differently and kind of break the chain in that way. And whatever it is, you will be inviting new energies in your life. You will be kind of, you know, collaborating with this flow of the eclipse and not just waiting for something to happen, but actually saying, okay, you know what? Again, I'm gonna pick up that book. I'm not gonna judge myself if I only read a few pages. As long as you are doing something new, Regardless of what it is, big or small, I think it's essential this week, especially around eclipse season, that you give yourself that opportunity that you collaborate with this Ace of Pentacles. And look at that, Nine of Wands is here. And Nine of Wands is very misunderstood in the tarot. It's a very lucky card. But I feel like because of the imagery, we kind of forget how abundant and powerful this energy actually is nine of wands is when we are ready to let the walls come down i feel like this is about befriending the inner saboteur noticing where we have been sabotaging ourselves uh, in the past maybe and saying i'm giving myself a chance to let go of old beliefs, to let go of anger, of judgment around, again, what I could have done better in the past and where I should be. And I think that this awareness of your potential is beautiful. It's like, again, you know your worth. You know that as a Taurus, anything you put your heart into, anything that you show up for has the potential to get real and get bigger and more abundant. Again, we are the sign that ground the idea. We are the second sign of the zodiac. So we really ground this um, spark, this um, primal spark of Aries. So something is born with Aries and the Taurus energy, we ground that, we make it real. We make it long lasting and possible. So a lot of the times when we do something for fun or just to break the cycle, again, trying something new, inviting newness into our lives, if we don't have this big strategic plan around it, we feel like it's worthless. And that is not the truth. Your value is not connected to how much money you can make with uh, a new idea. And again, your mind is going to go to that place of, well, I know how to do this. Why not take advantage of it? Because I think that, again, we are as uncomfortable as it is working with the Pisces energy right now. So 
It's about letting the flow, letting the movements of the tides really take us somewhere unexpected. You're not supposed to know. You're not supposed to know right now. And maybe you do. And that's totally fine. Maybe some of you are like, well, that reading isn't for me. I know exactly where I'm going. Babe, amazing, fabulous. I could not be happier for you. I am your biggest cheerleader. But I feel like for a lot of us right now, we're not supposed to know. We are tending to our nervous system, to our hearts. And the Four of Swords is here at the heart of this reading. And what comes before the Four of Swords? I think we all know, you know, the fabulous yet very scary Three of Swords, which is the Sacred Heart. We, are, we have been learning to heal the wounds properly, to not just put a Band-Aid on everything. To heal, to have very difficult conversation, again, to sit with the feelings. And with the Four of Swords, we are putting the oxygen mask on ourselves first. We are invited to be a little selfish here, which is not easy for Taurus. I, I don't think it's easy for anyone, but especially, I would say, Venus ruled signs. Um, there's this... We validate ourselves a lot through giving. How much we give to ourselves, how much we have to give, how much we have to offer. That's the thing with the Taurus energy. We're trying to quantify a lot. And sometimes, again, we find validation there. It's not about quantifying. Again, I'm going back to this Pisces energy. And when I'm thinking about the opposite of Pisces, it is Virgo. This need to quantify everything, to have answers for everything, needing something to be logical, to have a reason, a purpose. I don't think you're supposed to know in this moment what is the freaking purpose. I think we are meant to discover it. And while we are, again, tending to certain feelings, tending to our inner child's, inner children's, um, we are slowly but surely discovering new parts of ourselves, which eventually those new parts will be revealing more and more. Look at that, the Eight of Swords is here. One of my favorite cards. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we have a blindfold here and a blindfold here also. You're not supposed to see exactly what is the next step. And with the Eight of Swords, again, as I said, this is one of my favorite cards. And it, it has become one of my favorites because I've experienced it so many times. And I know exactly what is on the other side of it. On the traditional version, usually there is a stream of water here. So you know that if you get vulnerable, if you walk in the water, you might spend, you know, a few days with your feet wet. Your socks are going to be wet, but... It's okay. It's not that important. How you look, how comfortable you are in this moment, I don't think I don't think it's the goal at all. Again, healing is messy. It's not cute. And I feel like a lot of big corporations sometimes they make us believe that healing is this cute thing because they want us to buy stuff, they want us to do certain things, to consume in certain ways, but healing can be very ugly. And I think that cards like Nine of Wands and Eight of Swords, those like scary imagery are connected to healing in some way because they, they really represent how weird it can feel, how scary it can feel. But what's on the other side of fear? Everything. What is on the other side of fear, Taurus? Everything. That's my answer. I don't have a better answer. Everything is waiting for you on the other side of fear. When you're able to identify what you fear the most, 
I think that and what I'm seeing is a key. There's like this golden key that I'm seeing in my mind as I'm saying that. My guides are really wanting me to acknowledge that, that what's on the other side of fear is the key. The key. You know, when we're looking for the answer, I think that the only true answer lies there on the other side of your biggest fear. So Eight of Swords is a complete transformation of the mind. Acknowledging, really kind of understanding and seeing clearly how we've been judging ourselves. How we've been talking to ourselves and to other people also. Any eight in the tarot is connected to the infinity loop. And you guys know I always talk about this because it's something I constantly visualize in meditation. And not only when I meditate, but always. You know, when I'm on the road. You know, I'm a new driver. I just started driving this year at 35 years old. So it's like this new world. I'm discovering how shitty people can be on the road and how dangerous, reckless folks can be. And instead of you know, being angry all the time, I try to imagine this loop and to not block it, to let myself feel those feelings but not necessarily let them stay. There's always this clearing and this movement that's happening. And we have the Three of Cups here. I love that. And you guys don't see it, uh, but... I have a huge picture of the Three of Cups right there on my altar, um, which I, I put there 11 days ago when I had no idea I would not be working for 11 days. Um, I feel like this card has been following me for years and years and years. I always say this is the invisible family. This is... Um, our guides, our well ancestors, and that is so important, our well ancestors. Every time you do something uncomfortable, every time you do something that you're scared of, that you are proud of yourself, that you accomplished the little things, you are healing your ancestors. You are being celebrated by your ancestors. You are never alone. And sometimes we feel so alone. And I, I do believe that since 2020, and especially in the past year, people have been feeling so, so alone. I feel it myself. I, I hear it in conversation when I hear folks talking, when I read things, when I connect with my neighbors and my friends and family, people feel so alone right now. And... Sometimes we forget that we have, again, our well ancestors, the invisible family that is supporting us always. And the only thing we have to do really is to believe it. Belief, like cultivating that faith, cultivating that belief and that hope that, yeah, there is really something supporting me. Do we know it? I don't know. I don't think there's necessarily like, scientific proof of that it is a radical act to believe to choose to believe every moment that yes there is something bigger than me protecting me and supporting me that I am not alone and it is a practice sometimes you will forget but when you remember there's this kind of warmth around the heart space this is how I know personally um, and I don't know why it's always my, my heart space feeling warm when I know something is right, when I'm feeling protected, when I'm, I'm getting kind of a little hint that, yeah, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And three of cups is that feeling. You will know that you are on the right track. You're not going to need the validation of someone outside of yourself. You're not going to need uh, the cash prize or the job or the yes or the green light. You will know. 
You will learn to trust that feeling. You will learn to trust your intuition, your own wise self. And I think that this will serve you for the rest of your life. How right now, again, navigating uncertainty more than ever, we are solidifying this, this kind of invisible string, like our connection with the invisible and again with our own intuition. And I said this earlier, and I'm not surprised that the four, eight, and two of swords and that of swords came through when I said, you have enough information. Are you constantly looking outside of yourself for answers? Because this is how you will be left depleted. You will never be satisfied if you constantly look for more information for answers. What am I supposed to do? What is the best thing I can do right now? Did you ask yourself that? Did you ask your heart, your third eye, your, your gut, your lungs, you know, everything? What do you need? The answers are within. And the extra little support that we get from our guides, and again, this faith, it's something that we cultivate you know, internally, but I, I really feel like it's, again, this constant infinity loop. It reminds me of the magician card, you know, as within, so without. And the more you cultivate that trust within yourself, I feel like the clearer uh, external messages from our well ancestors and our guides, the, the clearer they become. And we have the Three of Swords, which I'm not surprised. Of course, we talked about it. There's this beautiful expansion. The three, you know, the two, the three, the four. Uh, I love seeing that. There's still something that you're working on healing, Taurus. And healing isn't linear. I think we all know that. But you're about to really understand how messy it can get. How scary it can be. But look what's waiting on the other side here. The world card is, and, and, and that very, it, it kind of started making more sense for me recently how I think that the world card is probably one of the most important and powerful cards in the tarot. It is everything there are two infinity symbols here the ribbon and this is connected to the fixed sign there's something so rooted it's like you have done the work in the two of swords you have moved through unimaginable things you have started so many chapters and ended so many things you have cleared out so much and welcome newness it's like this constant cycle but there's a celebration here there's a freedom the world card is is the most freeing energy everything that used to hold you back all the swords that you felt planted in your heart they're all dissolving and yes there are wounds to heal of course uh, again, which isn't linear and it's going to be a forever work until the day you're gone. You're going to be working on that healing, tending to your inner kiddo and tending to parts of yourself that sometimes are very hard to love and accept. But you are free. You are free. And it's getting me emotional because I feel like Personally, this card has been showing up so much recently in my life because I am free. I am free from very, very, very dark energies that have been in my life for, you know, 25 plus years. And 
it's scary, you know? There's a reason why there's a naked person here. It's very scary when you get to the point where you don't even remember who you were before being trapped in old beliefs and being truly free, which I think we have that when we're kids, this freedom, believing in what we want, talking to the trees, talking to animals, and some of us don't lose that, don't lose that, but some of us do because life gets in the way. And that's the thing. The world card is life. It's like the life path. And I think that this card is a confirmation that so much newness and things that you don't know about are going to come and surprise you. I really believe that in all aspects of your life. It's not just this one theme in your life. It's everything. And you had a re uh, reading recently that was like the total renovation, the complete renovation of your life's path. And that's the thing. The renovation is still going on, clearly. But you're kind of getting adjusted to everything being different and changed. And when the blindfold comes off, which is so lovely that you have the ribbon here all over this person. And you have the ribbon placed in infinity loops. It's like we cut the blindfolds off and now we are using it as you know a souvenir of everything we've been through it's still a part of us but it doesn't blind us anymore it doesn't control how we feel and think treat ourselves and treat others and that's the lesson here really honor that change celebrate that change it is your job to celebrate and honor how much you have grown and change even if it's not enough. Even if it feels sometimes like it's just a little step that you have taken, it is a huge one and it matters and it's important. And that little step, that little blindfold that's coming off, it really can change everything. And the world card is everything. It's all facets of you. And again, with the fixed signs, it's connected to everything that has been kind of the same in your life like why am I constantly moving through this type of fear why am I still afraid of this why am I still angry why am I still carrying so many feelings around the past and Taurus we absorb a lot I feel like all the fixed signs really absorb a lot and now as we are releasing that and less letting the, the Pisces eclipse kind of wash over all the things that we got so used to we're going to be making mistakes and we're going to feel lost and we're going to feel alone sometimes. And it's okay. It's part of the process. It really is part of the process. Let me pick a moon card. I feel like this whole reading is a validation for you, Taurus, of how uncomfortable the changes you're going through right now can be but it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong you're on the right path and that i can guarantee you you are exactly where you should be you are doing enough more than enough your dreams need a practical plan interesting so you are showing up give me another card for taurus your dreams need a practical plan and i think that this is definitely something again you know i talked about this earlier taurus we need to be practical we feel safe when we plan everything when we know what's up so i think that this is definitely one of the challenges right now why do I need to know? Why do I need to constantly be in control of everything? And we have Taurus opposites. Scorpio, which is, you know, the shadow work that we do. I think that Scorpio is the key 
a part of, of this, you know, key for Taurus to heal. It's time to release negativity. Yeah, it really is. This constant loop of I'm not enough, I don't do enough, and regardless of what you do and where you are in life, I think that right now we desperately need a little bit of hope, you know, a little bit of positivity. And it's not about sugarcoating. It's never about sugarcoating. It's about making space for a little bit of light, making space for magic. And your only job right now is to make space for that, is to hope, to work on that hope, to cultivate that hope and that faith that you will be and get exactly where you need to be. Even if you don't have a perfect plan, even if you don't have the answer or the secret recipe, you will learn as you go. And that's what makes you one of the wisest sign of the zodiac, in my opinion. I feel like really earth signs, we have this thing of, you know, slow and steady wins the race of grounding ourselves and taking the time to get to know ourselves as much as we can before taking action. And I noticed that a lot of earth sign have their like biggest success later in life. And there's something so beautiful about that. There's no rush. There's no rush. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. And so much is happening in the invisible. Things that you could not even believe are happening. Energies that are working for you in this moment. It's not because you can't see it, that you can't touch it and hold it, that it doesn't exist. And that's the lesson here. I'm sending so much love, Taurus. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your magic, your patience. It's an honor to be, um, you know, reading for you guys and knowing your legendary receptivity with, with tarot and my readings. It just I constantly feel... Uh, this warmth around my heart space when I'm with you. I really appreciate it. Take care, Taurus, and I'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye.